Victor Mesa Jr. Let's talk a little baseball here. We saw you with your brother three years ago now? Almost four years ago. Right here at the ballpark when the two of you signed. Yeah, it was 2019. Uh, you play a little bit in 19. You don't play last year in 2020. You've played 158 minor league games, but this was your first full season. Yeah. How's baseball going? How's it going for you? It was a uh, hard season. Uh, first long season for me it was it was good. Like I learned a lot this year, ups and downs. You know how it is. But the good thing is like I, it was a terrible start for me of the season. And the good thing I replaced that and I can make like a good second part. And I was proud of me, of my team, uh, every day, the coaches. I say it was a great season. Almost we win the division. We lost that right. game. Go back a couple of years, Victor, because as you and I sit here now, it's unbelievable that in a matter of three or four years, you're confident enough to sit here and speak English and do this interview. That probably wouldn't have happened all those years ago. I mean, you've taken the English classes seriously, the on-field stuff seriously. You should be proud of yourself, but how much confidence has that given you? I think uh, I was gonna say that that's coming with my personality. Yeah. I think since my first year, I learned the the basic, and that's the that's the the, the principal the principal thing, you know. I used to learn like. I'm not afraid to make a mistake. Right. I'm talking with my guys, Nas, Cyrus, uh, Bennett, all the guys that I that have been part of my my team. The good thing is I learn more outside than in the classes because in the classes you you learn how to do like a perfect send or something like that. But on the field, under the locker, on the dog, everything you gotta learn. That you gotta talk to them. How you how you talk to them if you don't speak English. So I gotta I gotta learn and. Hopefully I did, I know as well as you, but yeah, but we, I, we I, do, I do my thing. But there are not many guys, you come from Cuba, wherever, you're, you're Spanish speaking, whatever language you speak, there are not too many guys that are receptive to working this hard to put yourself in this position where you and I can sit here and talk today. I, I learned in four months. On my first year, I already speak English, but not as well as doing it right now, but you know, being perfect some things, but. How'd you learn? Did you watch a TV show? Was it yeah. just book work or was it, how'd yeah. you do it? I watched Netflix, uh, Blacklist. That's how you learned English? Yeah, I watched Netflix, Blacklist, uh, talking with my guys. Uh, what's something that you've learned about yourself since joining this organization? Something that I learned about me is like, no matter where I, where I, where I am, what place, always it gonna be me. Uh, I don't care if I'm in Cuba, in Miami, uh, in Alaska, or in Europe, <laughs> whatever. Always are gonna be me. Uh, that's something uh, pretty cool. I, pretty, I got pretty confidence in me. You've got a lot of personality. Yeah. Where are you at in your baseball career right now? Where, how, how, do you, how do you feel on the field? How far do you think you are away from being a Major League Baseball player? It's not too much different the, between the Major League Baseball and Minor League Baseball. Yeah. I think uh, the difference is details. How fast do you learn the details? And that's what I do in this camp, like learn details. I, when uh, a coach talks something, I try to hear what they say. When Dembo Jeter or whoever, Jeff, whoever is, sp is speaking on that, uh, on that room, I try to listen because that's gonna, that's gonna help me to be on another level. I think obviously the, the, the basic thing of baseball, I think I know it. But I think the difference is in the detail, the consistency. How often do you dream about making your major league debut in Miami? I'm not gonna lie, I don't think about about that too much. I just trying to be the process like I don't want to make a skip any, any step. I just want now I'm focused on the minor league. Uh, I don't know matter which level I'm gonna be next year. Uh, but obviously one day it's gonna happen with mine and I think gonna be great on my family over there in the stands. Uh, all the fans, like, we, like all the Cuban fans that is come, like my friends, everyone. Uh, I, I hope they're gonna be uh, supporting me, and it's gonna be a great day. Why are you playing baseball? You love soccer. I don't even know, man. I think I uh, was because when I was in Cuba, my dad was uh, a legend over there in baseball. He introduced myself to the baseball teams. I'm not gonna lie, I want to be a soccer player, but <laughs> I, <re laughs> I know that I got like a, something special to play baseball and I try to put in play when I'm in the field. I think you've made the right choice, but Messi holds up your jersey. What was that like? 
Uh, I'm gonna tell you like, a quick history. Uh, I know that he was in Miami because he does some posts on Instagram. The, the guy who do the uh, physical therapy, uh, Jorge, he sent me the location. Hey, he's in this house. <laughs> but it's so late. It was like 11, 1130 at, at night. When I get there, it was like a big house, like three story. And I got the, the luck that I saw his father go away, walking around oh. to the Messi family, to the Messi house. And I know him because obviously I know everything about Messi, I think. <laughs> uh, when I saw him, I said, George, sorry, um, I don't want to bury you. I'm a baseball player for the Marlins, but I just want to take a picture with Leo. I don't, sorry, let me know if I can come tomorrow, so whatever. Like, I don't want to bury you. I just can't because he, I'm a big fan. And he told me like in a bad mood. No, that's, gonna, that, that, that's not gonna be possible. I said, no, damn, it's okay. I just, <laughs> I just no, heard this. I, a few minutes later, uh, he's the nephew's message, he come away, he say, hey bro, George want to apologize for, for what he did. And I said, don't, don't worry, I know that he don't want to say that, but it's 11 at the night. I'm the guy who I'm bothering you guys. <laughs> no, no, you guys to me. And I say, bro, like, if you now you're here, like, can I take a picture with Leo? And he say, bro, it's too late. He was like, he woke up too early. And I say, okay. I bring my jersey. I only need that uh, if you can bring uh, my jersey to him. we will be grateful. I, I'll be grateful all my life. And the next day, I text him and I say, "Hey, bro, how are you? Finally, you can do something." He not answer me. I no, yeah. Okay, I go to the play. 6 p.m. It was a terrible game. One for four, but with three strikeouts, I was like too mad. In Jupiter? Yeah, mm -hmm. we hammerhead. At the end of the game, I saw that picture of that. I was gonna say that <laughs> he sent me a picture and I'm gonna say that it was one of my best days of my life because that's, it's not every day that you like to hold your jersey and that was pretty good. Cool. Are you the best soccer player in the Marlins organization? Of course. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs>